So anyway, we are uh, we have grown boys. Tammy raised them. She really did. I was out of town all the time. My wife uh, basically took infant boys. We have two of them. She uh, infant boys through adolescence into adulthood. My sons are good husbands, they're good fathers, and they're good citizens, and that's on her. She did an amazing job. She really did. But that was her. Uh, about a year into our marriage, I got home from the road one day, and she says, get over here, I need to talk to you. And, uh, and I sit down, and she says, and I'll, don't get angry. Now, when, nobody knows you better than your wife. So when she prefaces the conversation with don't get angry, she knows you're going to get angry. I mean... And you lie to your wife, okay, I won't, because you want to hear what she has to say. <laughs> so you're already sitting at 50. You're simmering right here. <laughs> so anyway, she says, when you come home from the road, you disrupt everything in this house. You just, like a bull in a china shop, we have a way of doing things, we have a rhythm to our life here. You come in, you disrupt the entire rhythm. So from here on out, when you come home from the road, don't do anything, nothing. I mean, what do you mean? Nothing. Do the outside, do the lawn, do the landscape, but nothing in the house. You okay? I go, yeah. Anyway, she leaves. And I'm sitting there thinking, why did she think I'd get angry at that? <laughs> what does she think I was going to say? No, I'm doing the laundry. <laughs> so for all these years, I never really did anything. And now all of a sudden, they leave. Empty nest. She's devastated. I thought that was the whole point. Raise your kids and get them out as soon as possible. I was brainwashed to leave my home at 18. Every time I complained at all as a child, my parents said the exact same thing every time. These mashed potatoes are cold. When you're 18 and you have your own place, you can have all the hot mashed potatoes you want, Jeffrey. I just assumed 18 you left. They got me a suitcase for my 18th birthday. I said, where am I going to go? I don't have any place to live. I don't have a job. You'll figure it out. We love you, son. <laughs> you know. Who knew you could live at home till you're 50 and become a U.S. senator? <laughs> Holy cow. So I had to go on Google and read blogs written by women who wrote about empty nest. And uh, anyway, it's a real thing, you know. And women nurture for that long, and then they, they, they leave, and now they have a hole in their soul, and they're looking for something, a new, a new nurturing project. And the only one standing there is their husband. <laughs> I don't want to be a project. I don't want to be anything. And it started with something simple. I got up one day at 7 in the morning. She's been up since 5. And I walk into the kitchen. You know, you're rubbing stuff out of your eyes. And she looks at me and says, what do you want for dinner? It's 7 a.m. I don't know what I want. I don't, I don't know. Dinner? I don't know. Hot mashed potatoes? That would be nice. <laughs> it got so bad within three days, I couldn't get out of my bed. I was paralyzed in the morning until I had an answer to this stupid dinner question. She's going to ask. I don't know what I want. I don't know. And what killed me, no matter what we decided at 7 a.m., we never had at 6 p.m., ever. <laughs> I thought we were having spaghetti. I don't want spaghetti. You wanted it at 7 a.m.? I tell you that to tell you this. Her mother passes away, and that first Christmas, she says to me, my father's going to come and stay with us for a couple of weeks over Christmas. I said, absolutely. Uh, he needs to be around family this time of year. So anyway, a week and a half into my father-in-law's visit, I hear him on the telephone say, I like it here. I think I'll move in. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. And he moved in. We're nice people, you know, okay. And I was put I was angry. I really was upset about it. And then he got up at 6.30 one morning and I heard Tammy say, what do you want for dinner, Dad? I think she's got a new project and it's not me. She took over her father's life. He was 78 years old. All he wanted to do was watch Gunsmoke and eat ice cream. That's it. And four days into living his dream, she says, Get in the car. You're not sitting in that chair the rest of your life. She takes him down to the YMCA. She signed him up for the Silver Sneaker Senior Exercise Program. <laughs> she took him down there every day like it was an eight-year-old boy. She signed him in. She signed him out. She made the poor man eat vegetables. He ain't had a vegetable in a half a century. I'm watching him eat broccoli one night. He was chewing it like it was gravel. He's like, ah! What's going on, Mike? Oh, if I don't eat the broccoli, she doesn't give me the ice cream. I just... <laughs> And you think that would be enough? He goes to sit down. She says, no, it's a beautiful night. We live in the country. Walk. She made him walk after dinner every night. Walk, 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 walk. 
And I got fascinated with my father-in-law's walks. I would watch them go back and forth, back and forth. Tammy comes over one night, what's with you and my dad? That's my future if he ever leaves. <laughs> I'm keeping an eye, make sure everything's safe. I don't want some wolf coming out and tearing a leg off of us. <laughs> so one night I'm watching, and he face plants. He just trips, <clears throat> and he's bleeding. And by the way, if you and your wife have to take a bleeding senior to the emergency room, you and your wife get your story straight before you get to the emergency room. You want to be ad living talking on the fly here. It got ugly fast. <laughs> Tammy looked in the doctor's eyes and lied to him. Oh. oh, my father likes to walk after dinner every night. I blurred out, no, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, that and a spinal tap and make his day. Are you kidding me? He hates walking. <laughs> they immediately separated us and put us in two different rooms. <laughs> I'm getting grilled. I finally realized, you thought I punched him? I love that old man. He saved my life. <laughs> Four months he lived with us. And then one day I'm walking by his room. He's packing a suitcase. I go, where are you going, Pop? I'm out of here. I don't want to get married again. <laughs> you can't leave. She's going to look for me in the project. I can't. <laughs> so anyway, he left. And about a week later, we're watching TV. Tammy doesn't watch TV, she crochets. So she's crocheting. And um, we quit watching things with subtitles because I got sick of reading to her. <laughs> so anyway, at one point we're watching something. Anyway, she pauses the TV and there's this moment where you're just kind of going, to, what, what's going on? She looks at me after a few seconds, she says, you need to trim your nose hairs. <laughs> we're watching a movie. <laughs> I think she has conversations in her head while she's crocheting that I'm not privy to. And then she brings me in at the conclusion. Look at him sitting over there with that shaggy stuff hanging out of his nose, his ears. How does, he, how does he live? Did you even see that? You need to get your nose hairs trimmed. Oh, one night we're watching TV, out of nowhere, she pauses the TV. Now, I've learned when my wife pauses the TV, I just say, what? Because I know she's been thinking. <laughs> she pauses, she says, there's mouse poop in the shed. I said, well, that's probably because there's mice in the shed. She says, you know that? I go, well, it's not like I walk out in a the shed. They come out and go, hey, Jeff, good to see you. I'm just thinking like a mouse, you know, on a cold, rainy day, the shed's not a bad place to seek some shelter. And if they got to drop a deuce, they're not going to go outside to do it. <laughs> she says, I'm never going in the shed again. I go, why not? She goes, it's mice. I go, Tammy, what do you think's going to happen? You're going to go in the shed, they're going to come out and beat up your big toe? <laughs> she says, I want a cat. I said, I don't want a cat. I don't want, no. Anyway, we get in an argument over the cat. No, I don't want another animal in the house. Anyway, a week later, she comes upstairs and she says, there's mouse poop in the basement. I want a cat. I said, fine, Ed. okay, fine, I'm done. She broke me, sir, she broke me. <laughs> I said, get a cat. So you know what she did? Went out and bought a cat. Bought a cat. <laughs> there are no more free cats in North America? Is that another supply chain issue I keep reading about? <laughs> Bars full of cats off of Long Beach Harbor can't get to shore because of it. Government regulation on cat. Free the cats, food and judge. Food and judge. I was watching our president speak, uh, Joe, and uh, about four minutes into his talk, I paused the TV. Tammy goes, What? I said, Is it me or does our president look like he'd be a lot happier watching gun smoke and eating ice cream? I did that joke in South Carolina, and a woman sent me a page and a half email. She was upset, because I was picking on our president. And he's just trying to save the free world. <laughs> <laughs> Made me laugh, too. I mean, so, yeah. so anyway, I read the whole thing. I, I sent her a short email back. I said, look, I normally don't reply, but uh, I said, I got one question for you. You don't even have to reply to me. Just answer the question honestly to yourself. If you owned a Starbucks, would you let Joe Biden work your register? <laughs> um, 
You know you wouldn't let him run the latte machine. <laughs> you let him greet at the door, would you not? Let him greet at the door, he's an affable guy. Let him greet your customers. He'd shake their hand, I'm Joe Biden. And then he would regale them with stories on how years ago, he walked the Colombian forest with Juan Valdez himself. <laughs> Matter of fact, he, Joe Biden, personally handpicked those beans they're roasting right now for your cup of coffee. You'd be so happy you'd say, thanks, Joe. I just had a cup of Joe with Joe.